The following is a morning walk conversation with His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 30th of June 1975 in Denver, Colorado. I can't see that he'll stay anywhere. <laughs> he said, yes, it's very good. He could curse, counter, but he accepted, yes, it is very good curse. I shall not stay anywhere. He has spoiled my children to become mendicant, go back to home, back to garden. They did not enjoy this material world. You are so heinous like that. Our students, parents, they are also thinking, what is this nonsense? No meat-eating, no illicit sex. The enjoyment of life, everything is spoiled. And they are becoming so nasty. So they are cursing. So we must have been hypnotized to give. Huh? You must have hypnotized us yeah. to give this up. <laughs> Doctor Judah, what is that? Charmistic, charmistic, or oh, charismatic? Charismatic. 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 Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. They are thinking it is hypnotic. All young men, their life is for this material enjoyment. They are giving up everything and chanting Hare Krishna, what is this? In, in Nayapur there is one astrologer mm. and he... Who is he had, I don't know his name. Uh, he lives in uh, where the railway is. Oh, Swarupaganj. Yes, yeah, Swarupaganj. Mm. So uh, he likes our movement very much. And he, he, did, he said that, uh, he told one of our devotees that, you were the most powerful personality in the world. And he has given very accurate uh, astrology readings to some of our devotees. And what, what he has told about me? That you are the most powerful personality in the world. If I am representative of Krishna, then I must be most powerful. Yes. Krishna is not uh, all omnipotent. <laughs> most powerful. That was my God brother. <laughs> that is a very great. <laughs> we are thinking like that. <laughs> you are Grihastha. <laughs> they used to say all the Grihasthas, Pacha Grihastha. <laughs> Pacha means decomposed. <laughs> When our devotees go to see a professor, mm. after Ban Maharaj has spoken with him, the professors don't want to take our books. They make complaints that our books are too sectarian, they're not scholarly, they're not uh, mm. um, in this way. He's making that buzz. Yeah, he's yes. giving some propaganda. The idea that he is he is more scholarly and more academic. He's asking you know, where is your book? He just get that one, he doesn't have that anymore. We had sold all. I think I never seen it anywhere. Well, one thing there was one debate, and he was there, mm. and our men were there too, mm. and he he was representing Krishna consciousness. Who? Oh. Swami Ban. Al? It was an inter-religion meeting, and there were representatives from different Christian, uh. and he was there for uh, Gaudiya Vaishnavism, or Krishna consciousness. Mm. But he didn't give any strong argument. He just presented it as if it were another way. What is that way? Well, he said, he described it very, about Radha, uh, that Lord Chaitanya is Radha Krishna combined. That we say also. Yes, but the boys who were there, they said it wasn't at all the way you speak. He wasn't saying that ours was the best. No, ours is the best. He isn't like that. He's best. No, it is as it is. One of our men spoke up and said, uh, the president of, of a Toronto temple, Uttama Sloka, he said, so far, we've just discussed 
uh, different re religions from a relative point of view. Why don't we discuss what is the absolute truth? Hmm. And they, they all became, they didn't like that. They said, uh, uh, this is, uh, he said, we feel defensive when you speak like this. And Swami Ban said, uh, you don't know so much. Yeah, he criticized he to our Udama Sloka. And then uh, he said, uh, Gaudiya Vaishnavas, they don't engage in uh, argumentation and debate. So Uttama Sloka said, yes. Lord Chaitanya argued with Prakasananda. Uh, yes, very good. But Swami yeah. Ban said, no, he didn't convert him by argument. He said he converted him by the effulgence. But there was argument, Rascal. <laughs> 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 And as a result of that, he, he told one professor that our devotees in general, they're not tolerant hmm. when someone speaks okay, something. You are also not tolerant. Why you have come here? Because you are envious. You are the most intolerant. Hmm. You are blaspheming. Yes. He also said that on the altar in Toronto, it's an altar just like in all our temples, he said, Lord Chaitanya should not be there with Radha Krishna. Hmm? They, ha they have them separated, like... Why? My Guru Maharaj of so many uh, Mahapur, yes. temples, yes. Chaitanya Mahapur. Yes. All the Gaudiya yeah. temples, they Yes, have. I don't know. The joke it has. Everywhere. Bombay. Men should be very strong to protest. They must know. He has come purposefully. Purposefully. Of course, he will not be do, uh, able to do anything. Simply asking you, sir, what you have done for the last forty years, and who asked him to start this institute, and why you are called back by Guru Maharaj, you ask these things, and you perform some ceremony for uh, neutralizing your Guru Aparat, you did it. <laughs> some astrologers, he admitted that I have offended my Guru Maharaj. So I'm not improving. So can you suggest anything? He said that you offer 108 billabhatra to Lord Shiva. And he did it for so many. Prastitya, is that called? Huh? Prastitya. Prastitya. <laughs> you mentioned that in your nectar of devotion that if some offense is committed, it's not necessary to perform any rituals but to uh, chant Hare Krishna. And that uh, one will become purified then. He might have started. And also he felt offended that the Brooklyn Temple did not invite him. They knew, he said they knew he was there, but they didn't invite him. Why? You, we could see that it is a Gaudiya Vaishnava temple. <laughs> temple. <laughs> I invited him from... From uh, Hawaii, you Hawaii. wrote a letter. Net result. Has he started anything? No. No. Some trouble. Huh? <laughs> Disciple in Vrindavan, that American boy. Yes. Asin Krishna. Asin Krishna. He asked him to come also with him to America, uh. but uh, he refused. The uh. Disciple refused. He told me that he said, you know, sometimes you can't do everything that your guru tells you to do. <laughs> It was a little difficult saying no to my guru, but I had to do it. <laughs> Living with him. Yeah. He also said, too difficult to live with my guru. I must live apart. Who asked for the absolute truth? Uttama Sloka Das. So, they have heard it. Yes, they asked him. Uh, Swami Bansa, don't speak. Huh? He asked, he asked Uttama Sloka, don't speak, it's just not, you should ask. Uh, wh what right he has got to say like that? It was amazing. Swami Bhama is just a guest also. So why he can, why he said, like, he don't speak? They tried to do that to you, Srila Prabhupada, and Kuruk, huh? they tried to do that to you in Kurukshetra. Huh? They would not, they did not want you to speak. Kurukshetra, no. They allowed you? Oh, yes. Yeah. But after some persuasion, I think. And they wanted Prabhupada to speak at the end. Oh. 
Oh. Because <laughs> you, you gave the final word. Yes. <laughs> so I gave them the all. What I said. <laughs> so, first he said, Saradaman Purija, give up all of this so called religion. Yeah. And I'm cheating. Yeah, actually. then you, uh, Dharma Projita Koitava. Huh. Then it's all this cheating. But the whole assembly was broken up after And then, then you, after you finished speaking, you got up and left and. The Acharya, he was supposed to speak, but then everyone else <laughs> got up and I gave my body, this is all cheating. <laughs> then I, I cannot do it anymore. <laughs> Another report from the uh, that National Library Convention. They have a big sign that the artist has made, and it says, The Bhaktivedanta Book Trust, the world's largest publisher and distributor of books in the philosophy, religion, and culture of India. As a, on their booth, and many professors uh, and librarians come. They've they've given out 400 catalogs. Mostly, they don't buy on the spot. They take this catalog back to the library, and they're from all over the country, from every part of the country. They go there. Catalogs being distributed. Yes, they're taking them. Then they take them back and check them off. And, take, and the librarians is, are saying, as soon as they see our booth, they say, any books on India and yoga and meditation. He says there's a great demand for them. Uh, many uh, young people who want to read about. It. But we have got the largest number of books. Yes. We call this Jogo system and world's largest librarians. They said, well, if, if someone comes in and asks you for a reference book on yoga or meditation, said, what, what reference books do you have? And they admit there are no encyclopedias or reference books on Indian philosophy. Mm. So they're describing that, our men are describing that the Srimad Bhagavatam is an encyclopedia of all yeah. Indian philosophy. Nigama Kalmataru Galitam Bhalamidam. The essence of all Vedic knowledge. Sudama so Maharaj and I were in Salt Lake City. Mm-hmm. We were in Salt Lake City. Mm-hmm. We went to the Mormon church, mm-hmm. visitor center. Mm-hmm. Beautiful presentation. Mm-hmm. Dioramas, so many dioramas, and a big ramp, circular ramp, like we want to have in Mayapur. <coughs> you walk up into a big diorama mm-hmm. of the universe with Lord Jesus is there beautiful presentation mm. of bogus philosophy but nice presentation <laughs> what is it pleasure? that uh, when you marry you are married eternally and after you die you go to heaven and you live with your family your wife and your children forever and ever <laughs> that's their philosophy marry eternal marriage oh. And when you die, you go to heaven in the same body that you're in. If you don't get married, then you don't go to heaven. Everyone gets married. They have a nice policy from the year 19 to 21. Every man must serve missionary work all over the world. And then he comes back and is married eternally. And movie theaters. It's eight movie theaters. Oh. Queens play tennis. Ah. Uh, the Queens play tennis. Oh, what is the use of playing tennis? <laughs> now, there is mention uh, that Dwarka they are playing ball on the roof of the palace. The Queens. Maybe tennis also there. Playing is there uh, on the roof. Kind of exercise for the woman, queens. Only for the women? Yes, no men. Krishna would sometimes play with roots in the forest. Hmm? Krishna and his friends would play sometimes catch with fruits. Fruits? Yeah. Well, they are playing in so many ways. Bird is also in India. Yeah. The scientists, they would say somehow or other the bird or something. Somehow or other. Yeah. This is science. <laughs> somehow or other. Maybe. Perhaps. This is just science. The whole Western country, they are all knowledge, simply speculative. Nothing definite. Professor Dimag has definitive. 
What is that translation or something like that? Definitive. Huh? Definitive. Definitive. Then translation of Bhagavad Gita. Like a human being, does he become a human being? Hmm? Dogs, they, be, they are becoming attached to the human being. Hmm. Are they becoming human beings in their next life? Maybe. Becoming attached to the dog. Yeah. Are they becoming dogs? Dog is never attached. <laughs> Eat his master. Yeah. Stay in Sankirtan. There's only a dog at home. Hmm? They knock on the door and there's only a dog. Oh? Some of the devotees on Sankirtan. Hmm. There is only a dog at home. They will knock on the door. Everyone is gone except the dog. They go from house to house uh-huh. distributing books. Oh. They ring the bell and just the dog answers. <laughs> <laughs> the dog is living in this big house. <laughs>